You know, sometimes I felt like it was a roller coaster ride. Sometimes you kind of think about the whole trip, and like, I think I can do this. And then some days, like, we have so far to go. Getting ready for our big adventure, doing the uh, Continental Divide. So I'm feeling pretty good today also. Um, pumped for this trip. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Ranger from the Divide. It started uh, several years ago when I came across an old coffee table book on the 50 classic mountain bike rides around the world by Nikki Crether. And uh, I opened up in the first page, um, first chapter in the Americas was the Great Divide route from Rooseville, Montana, all the way down to Antelope Wells, New Mexico. So that got me dreaming and doing some more research. And then uh, eventually I was like, that is on my to-do list. And I remember looking at that and like, who does that? That's, that's crazy. That is so long. I mean, I'm sure it's beautiful and it's amazing, but you know, trying to imagine yourself actually doing that. It's kind of one of those dreams like, oh, wouldn't it be great to, to ride your bike across Africa or something? Like you just, that sounds really cool, but is it one of those things I'll actually achieve? Probably not. And Brett's like, dude, we need to do it. You know, and Brett's a great guy because he's a go-getter. And if he puts a goal out there, he does it. He finds a way to do it. Here we were about six years later, deciding we're gonna ride from Banff, Canada, all the way to uh, Antelope Wells, New Mexico, and get it done ourselves. We uh, rolled in. There's a little cabin called Butts Cabin. It's about 87 miles into our ride, and we hit it at about 8 o'clock last night. And uh, thought we'd have the cabin to ourselves, but we met a nice Canadian named Ron who uh, had a nice cold beer for us. He uh, gave us some water, a and the cabin and everything was super nice. He let us borrow his foam pads, eh? Um, so, really friendly guy, living in Vancouver, eh? And loves Banff, had a lot of things to say about Banff, eh? Uh, Sean, he's great. In the amount of time you're out in the wilds with someone, you have to have a good compatibility. And most, for me, it always comes down to the attitude of the individual. It was, it was a lot of fun just hanging out with him and, and getting to meet him, so. Hopefully he'll catch himself an elk, I think, in the next day or two, eh? Yo, Brett Davis. What's up? Um, how you feeling today? I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. After we hit Golden Pass, there's a fast descent down to the border, across the border. It said, welcome to America. Sean got rid of all his change. Bought us some chocolate bars, Coke, Sprites, you name it. And then we cruised into Eureka, went and had huge 16 inch pizza and salad. And then last night, pedaled into the dark in the camp. Brett's a huge resource because, I mean, not, that's all that guy does is spend time in the outdoors. So today we're going to climb uh, up over Whitefish Divide, which is supposed to be another detour for the racers. But guess what? The hard men are going for it. <laughs> we're going to hike through snow. Should be a good one. Y'all need to come along. It's kind of my passion, just exploring the world through the outdoor, you know, exploring our outdoor world and exploring myself through all these various uh, activities. I've done a ton of travel and a ton of adventures. I guess you could say I'm a professional camper. So yesterday we left to beautiful weather in uh, Corbin, Montana, and then you could see the clouds kind of uh, increasing, getting darker, and sure enough, you know, you hear that first drop on the, on the leaves and then it gets worse and then had some lightning and stuff like that. So for about four hours, we rode in just pouring rain and sure enough, we ended up at the Hungry Bear uh, bar and met Chris and Brandon, uh, two pretty nice uh, construction dudes. All right, Chris, what are we eating here? In my experiences always in traveling, whether any adventure I've done, my run-ins with individuals, 
uh, with people have always been amazing. And it always surprises me that just how genuine um, humanity is. Rocky Mountain you want a ball? I got a ball for you. Come on in and have a ball. <laughs> and they uh, led us up here to the, uh, I'm thinking Swan Center cabins. Um, where we spent the next hour and a half uh, trying to get everything dry. So it's mostly dry and really hoping today not to get wet again. We are staring at the great tribe of the bovine above the hinterlands of the north in Montana. One cow seems to be ticked off at our presence. And Sean has this kind of easy laid back sort of um, personality and he has a sense of humor. So when, when it's pouring rain or we have lots of flats or whatever it may be that we're encountering, we can both look at each other and kind of laugh. Hey, what do you think about flat tires? got lost out here, but we we're in a mine shaft. The earth good angel, sleeping. yeah, good sleeping. The earth angel mine shaft uh, outside of Basin, uh, Montana, on our way to Butte. Hopefully, after uh, nearly 700 miles of, of trip oh, around. Back here. <laughs> this is uh, where we stayed last night, actually in a cabin outside. After our hardest day on the trail. We um, climbed over 9,000 feet of climbing past the Continental Divide or went over it three or four times, I lost count. Got eaten by numerous mosquitoes, broke chain, uh, flat tire, GPS used went bad. It was uh, an epic day on the Divide, but uh, the healing properties of radon uh, are really starting to take their toll. We need to get out of here fast. Yeah. So head to Butte now, I think. Yeah, head to Butte and uh, yeah. Ciao, baby. When I think of mosquitoes, I probably just think of uh, pure hate. Uh, we're in the Centennial Range, 4th of July, and uh, trying to get to uh, a camp near the Red Rocks Wildlife Refuge. I mean, there's few places I've seen with more mosquitoes than that. We figured out if you ride slower than 10 miles per hour, you're gonna get chewed to death by mosquitoes. If you were going 10 miles or faster, you were okay. They absolutely love me. I must just taste like honey to them because there's Brett who's getting bit and there's me, which you would think every mosquito in Montana heard that I was coming. And so finally we got to the four miles short of where we wanted to be that night. And there's Red Rocks Wildlife Refuge sent, um, headquarters. And Sean and I are like trying to get long clothes on and mosquitoes were the worst that I've seen in a long time and get insect repellent out. And I told Sean, I'm like, I'm not sleeping outside tonight. This is not gonna happen. Just stay here, I'm gonna figure this out. So I went up to the headquarters. It was at 10 o'clock. I said, hey, is there any way we can sleep in a maintenance garage or anything? I told him what we were doing. And he, he, uh, he said, yeah, follow me. Next thing you know, I get Sean and we're in this little cabin of sorts with all these computers and test tubes and microscopes and refrigerators with bugs <laughs> everywhere. And that's where we slept for the night. Anything else to add, buddy? Oh, I'm tired. <laughs> this guy's whooped as well, but we're bug free. Out of Montana into Idaho. Woo! It's been a long time in coming. Idaho's over there. Montana's over there. Yes. Montana's a beautiful state, and I wish I got to appreciate it more, but there's definitely a part of you who just wants to get out of Montana. I think just getting to Idaho meant another state off the list. So the Great Basin is 127 miles of nothingness in Wyoming, and it has this big, steep reputation as being the, the deal breaker for a lot of people. 
you've already been on the trail a lot, quite a few weeks, and spent a lot of time in the saddle, and you get there and you have to cross this expanse of nothingness with really no water. That's how it's described. We did 127 miles yesterday. Had a little bit of a favorable wind, which helped us out. Today, we don't have a favorable wind. <laughs> and so, uh, in fact, we're going against the wind. <laughs> Straight on. Pulling out of Rollins that day, it was a 25 mile an hour headwind. We had 15% grades. And uh, so physically, I think I was a little fatigued, but also more emotionally, which was giving me the physical fatigue. How have these uh, last 35 miles been? <laughs> The hardest of the trip, anyway. <laughs> it's been kind of a suffer fest. It's taken us uh, almost four hours to go 30 miles, so that'll tell you a lot. Um, we've been on a pace that's been much quicker. That last grade we climbed was 15% with a 20 to 25 mile an hour ahead. Do the math, real fun. And I remember eating a barbecue sandwich down at the bottom of the hill. We had some pickles and some spicy Czech Mex. Chex Mex. And then eating my second lunch at the top of the hill. Some more spicy Chex Mex. And then um, a club sandwich. And then uh, a glazed donut. And now I'm eating some peanut butter M&Ms. And drink a liter and a half of water with Propel in it. And thinking it's got to be over. And then we continued to battle that all day. You know, I've heard a lot of people say, if you get to Colorado, you'll finish. I think, you know, any of this stuff really is mostly mental, and the rest of the physical part is really a small part. I mean, you have to have your fitness to do something like this, but you can also build fitness along the way. Uh, I think it's the mental part just to keep going. I've been looking forward to Colorado. That would have been kind of a, a big goal for me. That was like my major goal for most of the tour, actually, because the goal of actually getting to Mexico is just, it seems too big. I feel like I, I made little goals getting different cities or getting to a state line. Now we are on our way up to Marshall Pass. Got about uh, another eight miles of climbing to do, but it's railroad grade, so it's nice, brother. And then uh, from there, we'll uh, drop over the divide again. I think it's like our 16th or 17th crossing. I could be off on that. And then um, heading towards Del Norte. And then after that, up Indiana Pass and hit New Mexico, we're under the uh, 900, less than 900 miles to go. Yeah, viva la Mexico! And it's funny, this whole time I'm thinking of New Mexico. Oh, once we get New Mexico, it's just gonna be downhill, it's gonna be easy, you're gonna realize you're three, four days. Well, New Mexico is like the second biggest state you ride through. And it's a harsh state. Um, it just feels like it goes forever. New Mexico, there's nothing else to say. We, uh, we got waylaid, we couldn't go through the National Forest last night because it's closed. So uh, we had to go around and we ended up here at Ojo Caliente, having to stay in a nice place because it's all we had. And then this morning I get up and we left our shoes outside because they're a mess and my right shoe's missing, which instituted a search across the street the dogs have a tendency to steal stuff so now my right shoe which wasn't doing so well is even uh, worse um, the freaking dogs had a good but I got it that's all that matters at this point otherwise I was riding in a, a croc in one shoe in the nearest bike shop Santa Fe 47 miles away on the west side of El Malpais National Monument. Beautiful day, riding along, and uh, you know, all of a sudden I kind of feel that, that soft feeling, and all of a sudden you just hear <laughs> So we're running, I'm running all tubes, of course I get a flat, you know, I'm starting to fix it, pull the tube out, what's giving me a flat, Rhett's pulled up. Dude, you got a goat head. Goat heads, these little devils that you find here in the southwest. Uh, it's a plant that will drop its seeds. So, you know, he's looking through my rear tire. Dude, what? I just hear him count. 11, 12, 15, 17. You know, I'm like, is he pulling a joke? What? He's like, dude, look at that tire. I spent two hours running out on the trail, repairing. We'd pull him out, pull him out. Okay, reinflate your tire. Did you make sure? Yeah. 
After two hours, we started riding, and about four miles later, we were flat. Pulling goat heads, pulling goat heads, pulling goat heads. I think we pulled out 40 plus goat heads from both our tires. And we had no more, uh, we had nothing we could do to fix. No equipment or anything, no tubes, no uh, patches. They are just the hardest little thorn I've ever seen. So that preceded a six to eight mile hike <laughs> to the nearest road where we then got there at 10 o'clock in the dark, 10 o'clock at night, and we gave ourselves an hour to flag down a, a passing vehicle. Uh, at the very last moment before I was throwing out my sleeping bag <laughs> on by the side of the road to sleep, uh, a truck picks us up and dropped us back at the same hotel that we had started the night uh, slept in the night before and had left that morning. So uh, it's kind of like Groundhog Day. We started all over again. You know, and it didn't feel like it was a mental battle for me. It just felt like it was a battle against the divide, the tour. You know, this thing did not want me to finish. It wanted me to go home. The Gila. The Gila is epic. It sucked, um, <laughs> to be blunt. It's kind of a series of ridges. So you're going up, and then you're dropping down really steeply, and then you're climbing and dropping down. We get to the top of a ridge and see huge thunderstorms and lightning coming. Five thunderstorms all day, just dodging them. And it's just getting darker and keeps falling you and falling you. And when it ra starts raining, the trail just turns into cement, just mud cement. And you can't, you can't even hike. You end up having cement blocks um, as you hike, so you can't even ride a bike through it. Great, I'm just a big lightning rod moving around here. So the Gila, we ended with several flats as we rolled into Silver City. My legs are shot, um, I'm ready to get this journey over. It's been good, but uh, I'm ready to have a break. And my bike is slowly falling apart as well. I broke another spoke, had a broken pedal yesterday, which I managed to fix this morning. And uh, it's creaking in all the wrong places. Uh, this is the last day, and I'm pretty excited about being the last day. Um, hopefully it's nice and easy every day on the tour is, right? <laughs> What is going on guys? I join you from beautiful Antelope Wells. We freaking made it. I can't believe it. They kind of come around and then you can just see these specks of little buildings. And that's when you realize I can drag this bike if I have to across the finish line. I could get a million goat heads in my tires, but it doesn't matter because I will, I will walk to the finish line if I need to. Oh, it's been a super long day. It's been a super long four weeks plus, whatever it's been. I am so pumped. I am so tired and uh, I still can't believe I'm here. I learned so many things about myself from this trip about my own abilities and how I problem solve. This has been one epic trip. You know, I can leave here happy that what I started is something I finished. Because you know, for us, we're not, we're not racing. We didn't want to set any records. We just wanted to say we did it. Good dude, bust out the champagne. We bring in, uh, we made it 2,745 miles of mountain, biking, torture, fun, pain, suffering, happy, laughs, cry, you name it, we did it. The last couple miles, elation, relief. We, uh, I guess, this uh, feeling of uh, that we actually did it, not really believing it, it's done. And for me, a lot of times, my lasting memories have to do with the people I've met. Yeah, all these people that you know we meet along the way uh, and come in contact, they impact my experience and, and the trip, and they add to it. I think one of the coolest things I saw is a lot of these roads were built by settlers, and I think it gave me a lot more respect for how tough these people were 
You know, I'm over here on my fancy bike with my fancy equipment. And I can call somebody on my cell phone in most places now. And if I want to bail out, then I can take the nearest road and head to the nearest town and, and be done. But they didn't have that. Definitely was an amazing trip. And in some ways, I still can't believe I did it. I think it's, it's amazing how if you just do something day after day, like biking 100 miles, 100 miles, eventually, you can ride from Canada to Mexico.